Hello everyone, I'm Darcy Bits. We are using Urza's AI in our new series, Unplayably Overpowered. See, over the course of my time using Urza's AI, I have seen some very busted cards. Some of the most broken things imaginable that I would not possibly imagine bringing to bear upon my opponent out of respect for them. I don't remember any of these cards, they've completely left my brain, and so today we are going to embark on our journey to create some new cards with Urza's AI with the express intent of making the most broken thing we can imagine. This is going to be a series, I'm going to be making a bunch of cards, and we are going to be choosing the most broken one from each individual session, and then... Probably I'll do like a tier list with them at the end. That sounds fun. I don't know what the end is, but you know, some arbitrary end point. That sounds great. So join me with that. Hope you enjoy. I think this will be fun. Now, Urza's AI allows you to enter fields to generate a card where the AI will fill in all the remaining fields. This does mean technically if we wanted to, we could create a zero mana card where the power and toughness are predefined and the type is predefined and everything about the card is predefined and we just make it like a 10 billion 10 billion with trample we could just do that if you really wanted to but you wouldn't be making an ai generated card you would be just making a custom card at that point and making it as broken as possible which that's not the goal so i think at bare minimum to count we need the card text to be a generated and if i'm not mistaken which i could be it's been a while the power and toughness cannot be defined if the AI has control over the card text. See, the card is made in a certain order, and anything that you define, they won't generate anything for anything higher up on that order. So, if you define the mana cost, you can't define the... the name will be blank, for example. Um, I think that's correct with the order. I do think... That if we defined the mana cost, we could probably make some really, really busted things by just making zero mana cards and letting the AI go wild with it, because yes, that that would happen. It would it would just go. It's not that hard to make a broken zero mana card. They're zero mana. Um, and so maybe we'll do that one day, but today I don't think we're gonna do that. Not to start. Today, I think I'm going to restrict myself to the deck name field. This is the field that informs cards in more of a subtle way. It's not defining the name of the card or the card's types. Um, it's just a prompt, and the AI yeah, gets to fill in every aspect of the card on its own. So, that's where we're going to be starting. And so, what do we want for our name? Now, we want the AI to think about broken things... There's a lot of broken things out there in Magic. I think one of the most broken things is all, or like every, or um, you could also maybe maybe like double, like that's a thing. But can I just make a card that just wins the game? Is that a thing I could do? Let's start with win the game. Seems like a great place to start. So, uh, deck name, I'm just gonna have the deck name be win the game. And we'll see if that's anything so this little bracket here defines a card we'll make a few cards with that structure so we can generate them all at once and such now i will not be saving every single one of these cards because it doesn't matter but um if something looks really good we're gonna save it, and we will put it to the test against all the other broken cards at the end of this series. That's exciting. That will do as a starting point. Very good. Excellent. I'm not going to read every uh, word on every card. I'm mostly going to skim them and I'll read the important ones that are good. This one, cool, four, but it's a 4 mana 3-3, three, three, not broken enough. What's interesting about trying to be as broken as possible is that they have to be unreasonably broken. Not just good cards. 
Uh, target creature gets protection and uh, additional cost to cast a spell. Sacrifice a creature. Sure. Um, Gemma Soldier, as long as it can control a Gemma. Control a Gemma. Gemma Soldier gets plus one, plus one. Sure. Brawler's Defense. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Okay, that's pretty strong. That's a. F this is exactly the kind of card I would be super into. This is my jam. It's a five mana 06 wall. Like, that's. This is, this is speaking to me personally. And then for three mana, you pump your entire board. Now, is that strong? Yes. Is it unreasonably strong? I don't know. It depends on your power level. But for unplayably overpowered, not a chance. This is totally playably overpowered. Body mana Bolas, six mana. A lot of these are really expensive so far. It becomes the target of a spell or ability. You may pay one if you do. It assigns no combat damage this turn. Sure, 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 sure. Welcome to chat. Hi, Bonsai. How are you doing? Lady of Spears. That one's relatively cheaper. Three mana, two, two. Attacks. Create a two, two. Hmm. So far, we're not getting anything that really does any end the game effects. None of this is really standing out to me as, like, broken. I think, really, we're not going to see anything that broken unless we get something really, really cheap. That's going to be the easiest way to bring, break the game. So far, nothing interesting. Alright, let's jump back to the top. I'm going to try a different term. It's good to hear you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good myself. Alright. Now, something I've done before that has occasionally worked is that you can really do some weird stuff by putting your search term in quotation marks. Now, of course, you'll notice the entire search term is in quotation marks, so you gotta do it all fancy with this preceded by a backslash. Is that gonna be good enough? I don't know. But let's give it a shot before we move on to a new idea. And hopefully I was correct about the backslash part. That's entirely possible that I'm wrong. Hmm, seemed to work. Very good. Hey, it's Gig the Rose. How have you been? Lovely to see you. Very, very cool. Alright, that'll be good enough. Let's actually take a look at the new cards. Brimstone Elemental, 2 mana, 1-1. One, one. It or another creature enters the battlefield. Brimstone deals 1 damage to you. Nope, that's not broken. Relentless Charge. Oh yes, Rose is fine. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. Relentless Charge, 4 mana, regenerate, no. 5 mana, return, okay. 5 mana, eliminate. Fiery Conclusion, 4 mana, deal 5 damage to target player or planeswalker. Repeal, counter target spell. You may have it return to its owner's hand. Okay, sure. If you wish, you may. Sure. Wandering Tiger, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two with lifelink. That's nothing interesting. I like that it's a cat, that's good. I've been quite well, thank you for asking. Feline Familiar, 5 mana, 2-2, two, two, with Monstrosity, 3, interesting. Oakmont Elder, that's a cool name, I like that. 4 mana, 3-2, Centaur Druid. What's, oh, that's, that's Target Creature, that's not nearly as strong as the other one we saw. Oh, this card's just called Victory, it's gotta be good, right? Victory, 4 mana, white spell, instant. At, as an additional cost to cast the spell, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. As long as you control a creature, gain control of target creature. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. We may be trying to break the game, but not in, you know, the, the cards don't actually function kind of way. Nylea's Mists, 3 mana, deals 1 damage to each creature, sure. Blood Cultivator, five, 4 mana. Some cards are very, very strong. Are they unplayably overpowered? I don't know. But if a card can just win the game on the spot, probably, 
probably overpowered. So that's our first metric. And if you know if we happen to see a completely busted card along the way, then then sure, that, that can put that on the list. Storm Tide Stalker, four mana three three, attacks other creatures get plus one plus oh meh. Oh, I hope you have good rest there, Rose. Thanks for popping in. Torrent Elemental, four mana three three. Three mana, deals one damage, no. Additional cause to cast this spell, return a creature that doesn't do anything else. Mauling Elves, five mana, two, four. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player sacks a creature. Taste for Acid. Two mana, return target creature to its owner's hand. That creature's owner draws two cards. That's kind of a cool spell. Huh. Illusory Genius is a 4 mana 2 3 with flying. You may cast it from your graveyard by paying 1 rather than paying its mana cost. Pretty good. Beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Huh. For 5 mana as a 3 3 Nightmare Bird, I don't think this is overpowerable. <clears throat> Unplayably overpowerful. It's, 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 it's good. Good card. Like this card. Not overpowered. Well, not unplayably overpowered. That's, that's, that's the line we're trying to cross today. Mirrodin Besieged. It's a six mana green sorcery. Each opponent chooses one of their creatures. Those creatures gain haste. Sure, that's useful. Rakdos Blood Gift. Four mana, two, four with lifelink. Gains indestructible, sure. Cloud Apprentice. So none of this is actually working the way we're hoping for. That is okay. Cloud Apprentice. Innocent Blood is a two mana blue instant exile target creature and all auras attached to it. All right, I mean, again, is this super pushed to actual magic? Yes. Is it? Unplayably overpowerful? Overpowerful? You know what I mean. No. Warp World. Warp World deals three damage to target creature. When Renegade Sky Surgeon enters the battlefield, it explores. Okay. Knight of Faith. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, you may untap Knight of Faith. That doesn't mean anything. School of Evasion is a 2 mana 2-2 two, two human wizard with flash. When School of Evasion enters the battlefield, target creature gains Shroud. Hmm, okay. Until end of turn. Outlaw's Fury. Perilous Research. 4 mana, choose one. Different things get destroyed. Huh. Alright. Maybe I need a different angle. Maybe what we need is some focus. So, instead of winning the game, what about some kind of board wipe? What about destroy everything? Can we make a one-sided board wipe that's really, really cheap? Maybe. So let's say... Wrath of Dogs. Sorry, do you think that's gonna work? No, but I thought it'd be funny. Oh, okay. I mean, that's worth something, I think. I messed this up. They all have a comma at the end. Oh, that's annoying. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. There we go. I wonder how I'm going to edit this, honestly. This seem, so far, it's seeming like this is going to be an annoying thing to edit, and I don't plan on editing it, so hopefully it's enjoyable. Hi, future listeners. <laughs> because this isn't interesting. This is not an interesting part of the thing. But cutting this out, not something I'm super interested in doing. 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, Raging Ravager, Elemental Dog. It's plus one plus one as long as you control another creature with power 4 or greater. New. Glacial Ruffian, 2 mana, 1-1. One, one. 
He gets plus one plus oh. Okay. Slippery Brute. Two mana. Two one. Dog. I like that I'm making all these dogs. That's fun. Uh, Uncanny Strainer. Four mana, one one with Morph. Sure. When it's turned face up, create a token that's a copy of another target creature. I like this card. This is a fun card, I'll say. Huh. We cast this card face down as a 2 2 creature for 3 mana. Turn it face up at any time for its morph cost. Its morph cost is 3 mana. So, for 6 mana, you can turn this face up and uh, make a token of a creature. That's cool. I like that. Beast Slash Lurgoyf, Invisible Stalker, Redeeming Rights, you gain three life, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand. I mean, that could be a lot of life, that, is, that could be like nine life for three mana, but I don't think that's actually that good. River Bus Centaur, it's vanilla, Azorius Demagogue. Enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals their hand. You choose two non land cards and exile them. Okay. Alright. None of this is doing what I want to do. So I think I'm going to need a different direction. Now, could I, again, define the mana cost? Sure. Could I define the uh, card type and be like, I want an instant or something? Sure. Definitely could do stuff like that. Maybe we'll get to that eventually. Today, I don't want to. Bonsai well, says, kind of off topic, but it has always bothered me that cat creatures includes all kinds of felines. Lions, tigers. Yeah. But canines have a lot of different creature types. Dogs, fox, wolf. That's an interesting point. Uh, dog and wolf. Totally that that makes sense. I could definitely see those being the same type um, from the cat comparison. Uh, fox, I don't think are... I mean, I guess they're... Hmm. I'm more wibbly on fox. But either way, you know, there's also, like, fish is a creature type, but so is shark. So, eh. Yes, I think what I will do... Are we gonna... Something to be aware of is that if you scroll you're going to miss some things. Some things are maybe going to be busted. There's an infinite number of cards that could be generated with Earth's AI, so don't take it too 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 seriously if you end up missing something that is absolutely bon bonkers ridiculous. Burning Sky Shredder. Three mana. ETB. You may destroy target creature or enchantment. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, deal two damage to that player. Yeah, anything that goes infinite has a lot of potential to be unplayably overpowered. Uh, anything that goes infinite with itself, I should say. Which we haven't seen yet, I don't think. Okay, I'm going to go a different direction. Again, as said before, I could simply define the mana cost. Instead... I think I'm going to try to encourage it to make me, I want a wrath, and I want um, goblins as a keyword because goblins tend to be small, so maybe I can get a cheap mana value, I don't know, might happen, and I would like uh, tokens because maybe we could go infinite with tokens. We shall see if this is good. You know, I really hyped this up as like an, uh, an ongoing series I'd like to try. And while I think that would be cool, I'm already very skeptical that this is going to be entertaining to anyone. 
because uh, I think people enjoy like hearing me read a bunch of cards, and I'm I'm just skimming right now because it's it's faster, and I want to get through as many as I can so I can find the good pieces. So uh, this one is taking its sweet time, so we will come back to it. Earthly ambushers, two mana, star star. Okay, good start. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Okay, that's perfectly reasonable. It's not unplayable. Orchard Slasher, 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Vigilance, 3 mana, Orchard Slasher, gets plus 1, plus 1. No. Goblin Matron, but this time there is 6 mana green Goblin Shaman. That's a 2-4. For. for green and tap, create a 1-1 one, one green and black Goblin Creature Token, which has reach. Weird. Goblin Raider, 5 mana, 2-3. Okay. Gravekeeper Aven is a Goblin, of course. Actually, it's a goblins. I, it's a goblins. Four mana, three two. Can't attack or block unless there are two or more creature cards in your graveyard. It taps to make mana. Okay, not relevant anyway. Grimy Glomer. Six mana, star star. As it enters, it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Okay, it's just that effect again. Sure. Goblin Spell Slinger, 5 mana, again, too expensive. It explores, sure. Vile Rumbler, 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Heads plus 1, plus 0 oh, as long as you control a red permanent. So it's a 3 mana, 3-2. Not good. 5 mana for 3. Shaku Pygmy Goblin. Ooh, legendary. That doesn't happen all the time. 5 mana, 4, 3, Legendary Creature Goblin Warrior. Shaku Pygmy Goblin has Shroud as long as it, as long as it's in the battlefield. It's in the battlefield. It can't be targeted of spells or abilities. Okay. Gargantuan Charging Goblin is a 3 mana, 3, 2 Goblin. It has Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under control against haste. Alright, I mean, that one's pretty good. Unplayably overpowered? I guess it depends on what you're cheating out from the graveyard, but... That's pretty good. I don't think it breaks the limit. I think that this is still within the realm of... Expected Urza's AI power level. It's a good one, though. It's, it's cool. Three mana. Two different colors. 3-2 with Vigilance, already kind of, like, yeah, that's actually already good, and then it ETB resurrects something, and gives the something haste, that's the kicker there, that is, the fact that it gives it haste, whew, but, gotta have something in the graveyard first, Mardu Spellskite, 5 mana, 2, 3, okay, Swallow the Ink, 3 mana, choose 1, deal 3 damage to target creature, destroy target non-land permanent. Cool. Destroy target non-land permanent. Goblin Charger, 3 mana. Goblin Warrior, 2-2. Two, two. As long as it's in your graveyard, you have tap. You have? I have tap. Alright. Alright. Boneyard Bonkers is a 4-mana 2-2 two, two, green and red Goblin Shaman. When Boneyard Bonkers enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a Goblin when you do create a 2-2 two, two Goblin Creature Token. For green and red and tap, you gain 2 life. That kind of looks fun. Boneyard Bonkers doesn't understand jokes. <laughs> nice. Grim Chimera, 4 mana, 3, 2, gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact you control, sure. Skittering Crovacon, it's vanilla, cool. Mm. Goblin Sniper, 6 mana, 3, 2, whenever Goblin Sniper attacks, if any player discards a card at random. Yeah, random's kind of cool, but it's too expensive. And the next one doesn't matter, we'll just ignore it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really should change my setup so that I can scroll to the bottom of my screen. I'm sure people get frustrated with that. Uh, Alright. 
But it was one pretty cool card. Nothing super busted yet. So, what else can we use again? No, I'm not going to say it again. You know what I'm going to say. I want something with tokens, I think. I want something with, so create, maybe, maybe create as a keyword. Uh, create token. Um, what do I just say infinite? <laughs> Does that work? I, there's no possible way that that's going to do anything interesting. Okay, you say that, but... Fonz in the chat says maybe you could try making legendary cards. Yes, that has the same issue with other defined aspects, whereas we definitely could do that. I'm trying to limit those at the moment. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, mana cost is defined before card type, and therefore we could not possibly define the card type without defining the mana cost ourselves, making both of those non-AI informed elements. And I do eventually intend to make cards where I just straight up say, make me zero cost cards and see what Urza's AI does. But that is for a future time. Dramatic Arrestor! Five mana, one, two, taps for two colors. Conjure, two mana, instant, counters a spell, sure. Endless Caress, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Longhorn Lizard, three mana, when attacks, plus one plus one until end of turn. Reigns of the Ghoul Collar Gisa, three mana as a Thrall. That's really cool, actually. Uh, regenerate Target Thrall. Doesn't even have to be itself, but it can be. That's fun. I like that. Uh, counterweight, five mana, green instant. Counterweight deals four damage to target creature. Angelic Triumph, four mana, instant. Creatures you control get plus two plus one. That's pretty cool. Volcanic Giant, 5 mana, Giant Wizard, Red, Tap, Tap Target Creature, Rescuers, Prophet, 5 mana, Vampire Cleric, 2 mana, Sacrifice, Rescuers, Prophet, you gain 1 life, Infinite Growth, 5 mana, Sorcery, Exile, the t Exile Target Creature, or Planeswalker, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's an XX Black Zombie Creature, where X is the Exiled card's mana value. Huh. Weird. I mean, you're spending five mana for this effect, so it's probably not that great, but interesting. Create. It also is creature or planeswalker. So the planeswalker would appear as a creature, not a planeswalker. You could still activate planeswalker abilities because that works. Huh. It's kind of fun. But it also can do a thing where you kill something that's really expensive but small stats, and then you get, like, a big version of it. And if you're hitting your opponent's stuff, then you're killing it and making something, making it very strong. But if you're using it just to, like, upgrade your own thing, it's probably not good enough. That's cool. Alright. Still, uh, completely playable. It's just cool. Flaming Enthusiast uh, gains life. Goblin Thrasher, 4 mana, creature Goblin, haste, whenever Goblin Thrasher deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it, if you do, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0. Marit Lodge, oh, hi Marit Lodge, you're a human advisor, huh? 2 mana, 2-1, two, human advisor, when Marit Lodge enters the battlefield, if you control another human, draw a card. Now that was not super interesting, but sure. Antique Volley, 4 mana, instant, tap target artifact, sure. Drown in Sorrow, 2 mana, instant, exile target creature with flying, draw a card. Phage Bomb, it's a great name. 3 mana, instant, Phage Bomb deals 1 damage to a target creature, that's not relevant. Colossus Rhino, 5 mana, Rhino, when Colossus Rhino enters the battlefield, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Okay, I mean, we're getting somewhere. Again, you're cheating something out from hand, so it needs to be in your hand in the first place. And then, um... 5 mana, 4, 4. And then also some other thing directly from your hand into the battlefield. That's pretty good. I think we can do 
better. And by better, I mean more broken. Cool, though. I like it. Charging Mastiff. Five mana Elemental Dog. It gains First Strike. River Shredder. Three mana Goblin Rogue. Haste. Gets plus one, plus out. Cool, but only once each turn. Yeah, that's not great. Merfolk Fisher is a three mana Cat. It has Swamp Block. Rampaging Bayloth is a four mana Elemental Enters the battlefield with a 1 1 counter on it if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Spitting Fungus, 2 mana, Death Touch. Whenever a creature dies, Spitting Fungus deals 1 damage to that creature's controller. Double Edge is a 2 mana instant, untap target creature. That creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. And then Sleep. Which is a 5 mana spell that says destroy target non basic land, you gain 3 life. But at the end of the page, so you can't see it. Well, believe me. Uh, Bonsai is saying, but if you remove the opponent's creature, do they get it, or do you? That's a great question. Can I find that spell again? Infinite Growth. Exile target creature or planeswalker, cre create a token that's a copy of it. Yeah, yeah, you create a token. It doesn't matter who owned, who controlled the creature at the time. Very cool. Tokaz's chortling laughter echoes from the distant dungeons. Azumi, Glade Guide. What have we learned? Now, for our AI Magic Showdown, which will be out soon actually, not out yet, but it, it's, it's almost complete, which is very exciting. Um, we both made cards with, like, the intent of building a deck and that sort of gave us a lot of like jumping off points like we need something that does this da, 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 da. but we were trying to kind of make broken cards not so broken they'd be unfun to play against but as strong as we could we weren't trying to pull our punches and that focus i think might have helped a lot um i should not need to scroll up to the top of the screen there makes me wonder makes me wonder It did create a token. We did manage to do that. What's funny is the word, place my brain goes is like when I'm trying to look for real magic cards, I go on Scryfall and I will search for like keywords in the card text that let me do something all the time, like when or whenever, right? And so with the deck name field, I'm wondering if those are the terms that would actually be useful. Let's try another uh, backslash trick and see if that works. I'm going to say whenever. And that's it. All I want is the word whenever. There we go. What do we have? Poison Scepter. Five mana. Additional cost to cast a spell. Sacrifice a creature. Scry two. That is it. Okay. Satirish Muse. Three mana. Spirit. Whenever a source... Oh, we got the whenever. Whenever a source... You... Source of your choice becomes the target of a spell or ability. The source. I guess... I guess that's accurate. Maybe? Huh. Does it count as a source if it's not doing something? Like, if I have damage on the stack, the damage has a source. Does it, does the, like, permanent, or spell or whatever, but let's talk about permanence. If I have a permanent, does it count as a source all the time or is it a source only while something is on the stack or is it even further only a source when a card is referring to the thing that is created the way this word like looks to me is like whenever a game object right like you wouldn't say that in card text but that's kind of what it sounds like to me like 
a spell on the stack is a source. But so is a creature on the battlefield. That's weird. Even if it works in the most charitable way possible, it's still not too broken. So, whatever. Cleansing Nova, three mana, instant. Put target creature on top of its owner's library, draw a card, entwine, four mana, instant. Return target creature and all ores attached to it to the owner's hand. What's that one say? I didn't get that fast enough. Cyclone, two mana, instant. Choose one to deal three damage to target creature and each other creature or destroy target artifact. How? Huh. What is the going rate for, like, deal three damage to each creature? Probably more than two mana, but like, again, you could still play this in the right power level. That's fine. Goblin Anarch. Three mana. Goblin Shaman. Two, two. Tap, destroy target artifact or shaman. Permanents that can just tap to destroy stuff are pretty good. Time lapse, three mana. Buyback for one. Okay. Okay. This card's very strong. I still don't think it crosses the line into so overpowered you wouldn't play it out of respect for your opponent. It's four mana make a one one that you can then just do an infinite number of times. That's not that. That's not. Like, buyback is very powerful. Do not get me wrong. I'm not trying to underplay how powerful buyback is. But, I mean, this card could exist, but it's free. Imagine that. That's what th that's the kind of thing we're going for. That's what we're shooting for. Seahorse is a three mana plant elemental. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Cool. Veiled Heritance. Two mana flash. Whenever Veiled Heritance enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent you don't control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Oh. I like the design of this card, actually. A 2-mana 1-1 one, one with flash that, like, sort of phases something out, kind of. Like, it just sort of stifles it momentarily, because you can't hit your own things. So you're not getting, like, a flicker effect for a benefit. You're only getting it. Huh. Because it's an online permit you don't control. I like the design of this card, actually. Anyway. Uh, Gloom Wielder slash Ruin Breaker. Two mana, human werewolf. Two mana, exile target creature you control. Create a 1-1. One, one. Interesting. Hollow Turtle is a... <laughs> Hollow Turtle? <laughs> Hollow Turtle is a three mana, two to one elemental. For green, it gains Island Walk. Alright, Sure. Sundering Instigator, 2 mana, Human Wizard, whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, you may pay 2 if you do draw a card. Lanawar Minotaur is a 2 mana Elf. Lanawar Minotaur deals 1 damage to target creature, sure. Downstream Displacement, 5 mana Fish. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature to its owner's hand, Revel in Riches. That's the name of a real card, I know that one. 2 mana Instant. Choose one, search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle, or just draw a card. Huh. I kind of like the design of this. It's just kind of like something you can only tutor for basic lands, or you can cycle it to just draw it, you know, and hope you draw something better than a basic land. Eh, that's clean. Disruptive Implosion. <laughs> Four mana to counter target spell, unless the control pays one for each instant or sorcery spell they control. Oh, for like the more stuff on the stack. That's a cool like idea for like a design space for a counter spell. Hmm. Merfolk Spell Shaper. Four mana Merfolk. Blue tap target creature. It's 2 2. Cleric of the Scales. Two mana Human Soldier. When it enters the battlefield, put a counter on target creature you control. Kavu Ambusher, three mana Kavu. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Kavu Ambusher gets plus one plus zero. Storm Cloud Herald, four mana Flyer. As long as you control another white creature, it's plus one plus one and has flying. Phyto Blast is that a plant? Phyto Blast is a four mana instant. Create a one one green sapling. Flashback for seven. Sure. 
Molten Flesh Mimic is a 3 mana goblin rogue. When it becomes the target of a spell or ability opponent controls, you may have it deal 1 damage to that player. It was kind of fun. Traitorous Blow, 2 mana counter target spell. Counter target non creature spell if its mana value is 4 or greater. Huh. Living Death is a 3 no, 2 mana instant target. Player sacks a creature. Cool. Play Bigger. Is that like a. Is that like a reference to Big Play? Isn't there, isn't there a. I think there's a spell called Big Play. It's like part of the uh, Strixhaven, the sports sub theme. Play bigger, two mana with buyback for one mana. You may pay additional two mana. Wait, what? Buyback one mana. You may pay an additional two mana as you cast this spell. If you do, put this card into your hand. Counter target spell is the control of page three. Huh. Once again, let's talk about this as if this is, like, the best version of this. Let, let's ignore, like, the wording and... Let's not worry about if it's, like, cards written right, because it's not. But, if this is three mana. Let's say it's three mana. Counter target spell, let's control page three, put this card back into your hand. That card would suck to play against. I would hate that. Just a counter spell that you can just play every turn for the rest of the game, but... Is it unreasonably overpowered? And I still don't think the answer is yes, because it doesn't win the game. Like, it's unfun, but it's not going to win the game for you on the spot or anything. We can do better. I think we can do better. Tidal Pulse is a four mana instant. Choose one, flying, two life, Kane's lifelink, sure. Spiked Brawler, 3 mana, wall, ooh, a wall, I love a wall. It's a 2-2 defender, when it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, that creature can't block this turn. Huh. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Akum Refugee, oh, we're at the bottom of the page, is 3 mana, 2-1 that taps to add green, it's nothing interesting. We haven't had a single card that I think actually counts. The whenever felt like it did kind of work. Like, we saw a lot of whenever cards. So can I make a whenever effect that will win you the game? So whenever... I don't really care what the whenever... Um, I don't really care what the whenever is. I don't, I'm thinking I want something that goes infinite. So maybe, um, maybe, maybe damage. Maybe whenever... And also damage. Maybe we can do damage to our opponent infinite times. That's... It's a direction to go. Might work. Alright. And we're back to this part. Everyone's favorite. I scroll and click. All right. Will of the Masses. Two mana, two, one, okay. So Jin Wizard has flying. When you control no other creatures, Will of the Masses gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Huh. I'm not exactly sure how the rules technically work on when effects. Right? Because, is there like a single instance when that happens? And then like, if it happens, if it stops being true and then becomes true again, is that a second instance? So like, when you control no other creatures, gets plus one plus one until end turn. If you then gained a creature and then lost a creature, would that be a second trigger of that when? Or is that when just constantly happening? just constantly and it actually gets plus infinite <laughs> i might be in over my head on what is broken uh since i don't even know actually how the cards work i need a judge oops you have been using the spell for a long time yet it has never stopped you we have watched your prowess in the arena and you have always won mayor viru cool 
All right, what else can we do? Needle is a one mana instant, deal two damage to our creature. Sure. Pouncing Diagraph is a two mana cat warrior. It's a two two with haste. ETB creatures you control gain haste. Okay. Sublime Jin, two mana. Jin Monk, tap, gain one life. One, two. Cool. We're getting some cheaper spells, which is nice. Volcanic Flames, two mana. Creatures you control get first strike until end of turn. Six mana, Human Knight, Vigilance, Haze, Tap, gets plus one plus, oh, it's a four four. Ponderwort Druid, I do like that name. Four mana, it's a one one that taps for green, it's just the most expensive land of War Elves. Scuttling Drake, four mana, Drake, gets plus one plus one as long as you control a Swamp, two one, or two three. Bone Blade, four mana, instant, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Okay, Rapacious Snuff Out. Three mana instant until end of turn. My eyes are playing tricks on me. I feel like everything's sliding up. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus one gains. Tap and destroy target creature with power three or greater. Huh. It's kind of cool. Drana's Apprentice is a six mana spell. It does something. Back to Nature is a five mana spell that is not returned to nature. It says instant destroy target non-forest creature it can't be regenerated <laughs> yeah destroy target non-forest creature sleight of hand is a three mana instant counter target spell if that spell is countered this way put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead of into the graveyard Reef Drake is a 2-mana Drake. It has flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Sure. Pillar of Light. 2-mana. Instant. Counter target spell. Its controller gains life equal to its mana value. Closing Statement. Is a 2-mana instant. Counter target spell. You gain 2 life. A lot of counter spells. Fateful Rebirth is a 4-mana instant. Draw 3 cards, then discard 2 cards. Faithful Rebirth deals damage to target creature equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Huh. That's a fun design. I like that. Weird. Eldritch Scrying is a 3 mana instant. Ugh. Look at the top 3 cards of your life. What the heck's going on with my cursor? Okay. Three cards to your library, you may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of the library. Okay, like I said, three mana. Okay. Springleaf Drum, I recognize that card, is a three mana instant. Search your library for a basic land, put it into the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Sure. Surge of Strength is a five mana instant. Additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Yeah, for five mana, that's that's completely reasonable. Very good, though. I like it. It's just, yeah. Bonsai, you're heading out? All right. Have a good night, Bonsai. See you later. Thanks for jumping in. Night Dive, oops, is a two mana instant until end of turn. Target creature gets two mana. This creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Sure. That's fun. Alpine Viper is a three mana two two reach. Cool. Is Demonic Agent, sure, is a 5 mana 2 4 horror. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals X damage to target opponent or planeswalker where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. That is pretty scary. But, like, I think completely, like, it's, it's fairly scary. That's a weird way of saying that. I know what I mean. Smoldering Shepherd. That's a great name for a card, actually. My cursor's in a weird spot. Let me move over. Okay, there we go. Three mana, one, one. Untapped target creature. Activate only if you control a creature with power four or greater. Wow, boring. Purify is a three mana instant. It counters target spell. That's all it does. And the last card, which I think is off screen. There it is. Is Vraska's Contempt a three mana Eldrazi Drone? It's a two one with Devoid. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, return target card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whatever. What have we learned so far? We've learned that it's very difficult to make a broken card without enforcing some fields. 
which is honestly pretty cool. Urza's AI, actually really good. <laughs> like, this is a testament to just how good Urza's AI actually is. I don't know why I copied all those. That was not the intent. But it's not what we want right now. So let's go with the what are some really powerful creature types and maybe go from there. I think worms are very funny. I don't know if they're actually good, but worms... Worms that win is what I'm going with. <laughs> it's not going to be good. It'll be great, believe me. Come on. Have a little faith. We can get there. I think at the end of the day, what I'm really learning is... If you make a really broken card with their Zay, had nothing to do with you and your input and you, like... <laughs> directing the AI in the right direction. It's just dumb luck. <laughs> I've seen such busted cards before. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just about time. It's just about time. Three mana, two, two, cool. Devouring Worm, three mana, four, three. When it dies, you may pay red if you do draw a card. Bone Worm, three mana, three, three. When a creature dies, it gets plus two, plus two until under. Plus two plus, oh, sorry. Perilous Research, two mana instant. Create two one one worms with raid green. Discard your hand, sacrifice two land, sacrifice a land. Create a two two. Okay, I don't actually know what that means. I'm gonna ignore that. Threshold of Ruin, six mana, create X worms. X is the gen greatest power among creatures you control. Bargain Basher is a three mana worm. Control first strike and turn to them. Magma Worm, four mana worm. Whenever it becomes blocked, sacrifice at five, four. Seismic Giant, four mana, four, four. Whenever Seismic Giant becomes blocked, it gets, it deals two damage to target creature, blocking it. Incendiary Giant, 6 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Incendiary Giant enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Incendiary Giant gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Create a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, wait a minute. This one's actually really good. The thing is, it's 6 mana. Like, can a 6 mana ever be broken? I don't know. It's so expensive. You might be dead by then if you're playing against an aggro deck. It's pretty good, though. It's a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven, that for red mana, it buffs itself plus 1 plus 1. Or you can spend red mana to make a 3-3. Three, three. If you play this for 6 and it sticks, the next turn, you just make 7 3-3s. Three, and you still have a 7-7. Seven, seven. That's, I mean, that's game winning right there. It really is. It's not immediate though your opponent has time to respond like they can remove this or they can you know deal with all of your seven seven your your three threes yes you have like a ton of them but they don't have haste they don't have trample like it doesn't just win you the game it is not good enough for this challenge Rupture Claw Berserker, 3 mana 2-2, two, two. attacks each combat of Fable, Outwit, a 2 mana instant, choose 1, counter target spell, and control pays 1, counter target spell, and control pays 2, great. Crawl Worm, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. Worm, it gains first strike. Tide Speaker Adepts, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Arkum Dagson. Is Arkum Dagson a real card? I've made a card named Arkum Dagson before. What? Okay, I've never made Arkum Dagson Professor Explorations. That's a very funny name. Reveal it, put it into your hand if you search your library this way, shuffle. Huh. Steam Flogger Worm is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with haste. Uh, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until a turn, but only once per turn. Cruel Worm is a 6 mana 5-5 five, five. when it attacks it gets plus 2 plus 0. Terrifying Worm is a 4 mana 
enters the battlefield. Creatures you control get plus one plus one to haste. High Giant is a three mana zero zero. Enters the battlefield with two one one counters on it. Sacrifice it. Does the thing. Champion of Worms is a two mana two one Vigilance Lifelink. I'm starting to wonder, even if I made a card that was just so busted that you just would never want to run it because it just feels so rude, would that card even be interesting? Like a card that's just like two mana instant speed, you win the game. Yeah, that would satisfy the bill of just unplayably overpowered, but it's not interesting. I don't know. I don't know. What I think is we need to start defining our cards a bit more. Unfortunately, we are not having any luck for making actually the most broken cards. So, it is time to do mana value zero and see what happens. Maybe your Zai is better than I'm giving it credit for and it won't make the most broken zero mana cards possible. I'm gonna find out. I believe it is mana cost. I do not recall whether or not it is with a like an underscore or a weird capitalization. I don't know if the capitalization would matter or not. Let's just start with this and see if it works. Oh? I can't scroll any further down because I didn't do this right. No. Cacophony, three mana, destroy target. A target creature can't block, destroy target creature. That's pretty good, actually. Choose one or both, yeah. But that did not work. So mana cost, is it mana cost? I feel like it might have been mana cost, which is very silly. It is. All right. Let's go. It is simply a aspect of capitalization. Oh, I didn't do that fast enough. Wait, is that a period? Oh, now I messed it up again. Comma. Copy, paste, 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 paste. All right, uh, now we could have changed the deck name. I probably should have. I didn't. I don't have a reason for that. I just, just lazy. I didn't, eh. What does zero mana spells look like? Really hard to say. These are all gonna be colorless, which is highly going to influence what the AI thinks because the AI knows that colorless cards, you know, tend to be artifacts and stuff. Or maybe lands. Valiant Worm is a zero mana 1-1. One, one. Taps to add colorless for two mana and tap. It deals one damage to target attacking a blocking creature. Probably too strong to print. Not too strong for our challenge. Orchard Life is a zero mana artifact. Taps to add red. Same, same. Far Strider Boots. Zero mana artifact. Tap to add colorless for five mana. It becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Until out of turn. Tomb Worm is a zero mana artifact creature worm. Cool. It's a zero zero. Um, it does not enter with counters. It just dies immediately. So that's fun. Uh, for two mana, exile target cre target card from a graveyard. If the exiled card is a creature card, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Tomb Worm. Too little, too late. I'm afraid. Glacial Adjudicator is a zero mana artifact. Tap to add red. Okay. Ruin Sliver. Now, Slivers are kind of busted. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. Slivers are pretty busted. Uh, zero mana, zero one. All Slivers have tap, add one of three different colors. So, so far, we're seeing kind of like mana rocks. I guess like zero mana mana rocks are a thing. So, that's where the uh, the AI is going. Wooden Mask. Hmm. Choose a creature you control, a target creature you don't control, those creatures fight. Well, so far, these are not super interesting. So I think we're going to try again. Now, I do want to stick out this zero mana thing for at least a little bit. But what I really want, I think, I think the most busted card 
is going to not be a permanent. Well, actually, enchantments are super busted. Can I make a zero mana enchantment? Huh. Sure, let's try that. I talked myself into it. We've been going at this for about an hour now. See, I want to get at least one good card. At least one good card that feels unplayably, right? I want the feeling of I'm making cards for a, for a game and I'm just I'm just I'm just making cards and seeing what's out there. And then I see a card and I go, I can't possibly play this against my my opponent. That would be so rude. I would feel bad. That is the feeling that I'm looking for in this challenge. Spectral Mitts, zero mana taps for color. Okay. Uh, lands actually would probably work pretty well, to be honest. Which is interesting. Simic Domination, zero mana. ETB, three charge counters. Sure. Obelisks of Unity. What? Okay, sure. Telekinesis Circuit. Taps for colorless, three, wait, how much is that? Four mana, put an artifact from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains when this deals combat damage to a player, exile and put a charge counter on telekinesis. Sure. Mana burn. <laughs> uh, artifacts, two mana tap, next time you, you would deal damage this turn, prevent that damage. Sure. Ordeal of the Fervent. Creatures you control dies, draw a card. Pretty good. Stained Glass, zero mana. Artifact, tap, colorless. It becomes a 2 2. Sure, it's still tapped. Chalice of the Void. Enters tapped, does a thing. Razor Lizard, sure. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield and you control, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It's an artifact. Whispering Shores, zero mana. Target player mills X cards, where X is the number of mana symbols in Whispering Shores mana cost. Just zero, I guess. Shell of the Noble, one tap next time a creature you control would deal combat damage to this turn, prevent that damage, okay. Power Drain, zero mana, gain a life. Yeah, okay. I mean, none of these have been that broken. Huh. Create a 1-1. One, one. Create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. You have to already have a token of something. Very strong if you have it, but I don't know. If it needs outside support, is it really that busted? Creatures you control until end of turn. Until end of turn. Cursed Scroll of Midas. All right. New plan. We're removing the mana cost again, but we are going to keep this enchantment idea because enchantments are they're very good. Urza's AI, I don't, I don't believe Urza's AI knows how to make, or we could try like Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers are pretty strong. I don't know if Urza's AI knows how to make them very well because there's a sort of a smaller sample size for Planeswalkers. Maybe that would help. This isn't a very interesting search term. It's simply the deck name Enchantment. Uh, so unlikely to really be super interesting, but uh, well, not, it, they could be interesting, it's just we don't have a lot of control over what we're going to see. Fire Seed is a 4 mana, destroys the thing. Okay, Planar Portal is 2 mana enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose 1, create a 0-0. Zero, zero, or tap 3 untapped creatures and add... That's so weird, it's, it's templated as a cost. Which I think is like, super fine. Like, it's a weird templating, but, like, I kind of like that. The idea of, like, a choose one that then have, like, allows the different modes to have different costs. I kind of like that, actually. Huh. Anyway, Spark Cloak Guild Mage is a five mana fairy rogue. 
Tap is an artifact creature or land. 2 4, Mystic Web, 3 mana, enchant creature. Uh, gets plus 2 plus 2 at the beginning of your upkeep. You may return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Cool. Fracture. Frac fracture. Crack. 5 mana. You may cast this as though it had flash. If you cast it any time a sorcery couldn't have been cast, the controller of the permanent it becomes. Okay, if this was like a creature, that would be actually kind of interesting, right? Like, the permanent it becomes. Sacrifices it at the beginning of the next cleanup step. If that player has no cards in their hand, they lose the game. I mean, that's a reminder text, so it's not even in effect, even if this card did make sense. Valakut Exploration, 2 mana. Whenever you gain life, you may pay 2. If you do, draw a card. Song of the Drowned, 2 mana. Uh, ETB, draw a card, enchanted creature, gets plus two plus two. Evolving Biome is a six mana four four plant. It enters tabbed and it taps for green or blue. Sea Chrome, sea Chrome Coast is a three mana enchantment. Prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to you this turn. Sure. Field Nymph, four mana, two two. Whenever enchanted creature blocks or becomes blocked, it's not enchanted, that kind of enchantment. Disrupting Shoal, 5 mana. When it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more other islands, target player loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Crustacean Broodmother, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, with some text. Swamp Walk, got it. Whenever a creature you control with Swamp Walk dies, create a 1-1 one, one crab creature token with Decayed. I like this card. Again, not broken. Not by any means is this broken. It's but it, it's swamp walk matters, and your reward is one one crabs that can't block. I kind of love that. That's like really we honestly. I think we could really go for seeing decayed come back. Decade's a bit of a weird one because it really feels like it only makes sense thematically with zombies the way it was originally introduced. But like for example, people talk about how it's weird that like. A squirrel is a 1-1, one, one, right? But a decayed, like you throw the decayed tag on something, and suddenly it's not really a 1-1, one, one, right? It can't block, it dies when it attacks. I feel like that's actually a kind of an interesting way of representing something smaller than a 1-1 one, one that can still like get some hits in. Never happened, but interesting. Bizarre denizen. 5 mana, 3, 4, beginning of your upkeep. If you control 3 or more creatures, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. Whispering Snakes, 4 mana, enchant creature. It's not an enchantment. I've never seen that before. I've never seen the AI make that mistake. When Whispering Snakes enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Huh. Cutting Action is a 2 mana enchantment. Enchant creature enchanted creature gets plus two plus two as long as it's a white creature sand step tribute three mana instant return it to its owner's hand okay sky hunter dragon three mana three three dragon flying trample when it enters the battlefield return no reveal the top card of your library if it's a creature put it onto the battlefield Okay, um, this one's pretty cool. Once again, I would not call this unreasonably overpowered. It's a 3 mana 3 3 with flying and trample. That's already great, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't win you the game. Like, there are still points of interaction before the game ends. It does also cheat out something from your library, but it's the top card. Unless you have some way of knowing what's the top card of your library, which of course means you need to use another card, like a vampiric tutor or something. Yeah. That could whiff. I like it, but it, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Alpine Pathway, three mana enchantment, tap add color, blue, pale, two life, draw a card. Last card here, which is cut off, says Order of the Ebon Dragon, two mana enchantment. When Order of the Ebon Dragon enters the battlefield, draw a card. That is it. I don't want to have this day end as a bust, but I am getting tired. I think what we've learned today is it is harder than I thought to intentionally make a broken card 
using Urza's AI, which is really cool. Like, don't get me wrong, I know those cards exist. In fact, there are some pretty scary ones coming up in the AI showdown. But actually sitting down and intentionally trying to make a broken card? Whew. Wish me luck as this series continues. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep at it. Let me know if this is something that you enjoy. If it's not, also let me know that because I want to know if I could do doing something that is more interesting to people. <laughs> but I'm interested to get to the bottom of this. So, I will see you in the next one. Also, like, have a good night. I feel like I usually say have a good night, and that time I didn't, and it's like, have, have a good night. I hope you have a great night. I've been Darcy Bits. Bye.